In case you didn't know, this Saturday, February 12th, 2022, is the one year anniversary of the global release of the Digimon card game. And in celebration of that release, I will be posting a video and going live on my Twitch channel every single day until Saturday. A special event I have affectionately named Digimon Week. So strap in and enjoy all the videos and streams you can this week because my sanity probably will not allow me to do this again anytime soon. Until then, however, enjoy today's video. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Steven. I'm your true champion. And today we're going to be talking about the best products in the Digimon TCG. Also the worst ones. In honor of the one year global release for Digimon, Louise the Panda and Gyroshan are joining me today to rank the best products released in the past year for the English version of the game. Also a couple of Japanese sets because let's be honest, without those sets, we wouldn't have this game at all. And I know you're looking at that video media and you're going, oh my gosh, what am I signing up for? Trust me y'all, it is going to be well worth it. This is gonna be a fun ranking and an overall cool discussion on the products within this game because as much as we love of playing this game, we wouldn't be able to play the game without product. And being able to tell what good product looks like and what bad product looks like is a very important thing because that way you can make smarter decisions when it comes to spending your money on shiny cardboard. Also, huge shout out to Louise the Panda and Gyroshan for joining me today. It was a lot of fun chatting with them about the products of the game. And if you want to check out any of their stuff, I'll leave links down below in the description. And if you guys are excited for this video, as well as the continuation of Digimon Week, be sure to let me know by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, and uh, clicking that bell for notifications. So you know when my videos go live for you. With all that said, let's go ahead and hop into the tier list. All right, y'all, here we are. I have Lewis, I have Sean, and I have the tier list of 27 products, Digimon TCG, that we're gonna talk about and rank because as you guys are well aware, the one year anniversary for Digimon is coming up this Saturday. And I wanna celebrate how cool this game actually is by talking about the products that made it all possible. This tier list is very simple. We have S all the way to D, S is the best, D is the worst, and then things in between. Uh, we're gonna try our best to like individually rank these sets first, and then we'll do like a group ranking after each set. Uh, it'll make more sense once you actually see us go through the process, but we're gonna go one at a time with talking about the sets. It's gonna go me, then it's gonna go Sean, then it's gonna go Lewis, and then back to me, so on and so forth until we're done. And you guys might notice that we don't have just English set releases here. We actually have Japanese boosters that I wanna talk about because even though the English version of the game has its one year anniversary, a lot of what was established for this game and what was awesome about it was established in those first three sets for JP. And I wanna talk about them because they actually are different from our first two sets in the English version, and I do think they offer a bit more uh, than the other ones did, slash less, depending on which set you're talking about. With all that being said, Sean, Lewis, if you guys are ready, go ahead and hop into it. I'll be starting off with New Evolution, the first Japanese set of the Digimon T. Now, it's the first set, okay? And I think if we look retrospectively, we can probably be like, you know, there's only like one really good deck out of this set, which is Omni, it's not the most impressive thing, but if you're starting off a new game, what what set did a better job than New Evolution? You had all the big hitters, you had Metal Garu Rumon, you had War Greymon, and you had Omnimon that were all kicking butt right out of the box. It advertised so well for the game and went alongside the new starter decks very well to complete decks from the get go. Uh, and I just personally love this game, so I'm gonna be a bit biased and put it in S tier. Uh, what, do, what do you guys think? Uh, I mean, I think the fact that Omnimon is included here, and like, I didn't, I didn't really follow the Japanese meta, uh, so that's that's the perspective I'm coming from. But looking at the original 1.0 set list, I would also put it at S tier only uh, as well because I actually look at the card list, and a lot of the cards still see play, which is not, it's not always something, right? Like, you know. Uh, even Omnimon, which is like, you know, kind of fallen off to a degree. But like the fact that like this came out in the first set, a lot of the things that fuel security control, whether or not you like that, um, <laughs> you know, uh, and a lot of cards that like, you know, Gabumon, the Drabumon engine, the two drops that you have in Rookie Rush decks. Like, I, I just think a lot of stuff in here has held up well over time because they're just they're generically good, which is hard to power creep, I think, a little bit. 
but uh so yeah it's it seems very powerful i would say though the lack of uh, uh, seeing this for the first time the lack of purple and black i'm sure makes a lot of people very very upset it might be d tier on some people's list for that reason but wait wait if you want to use the power of hindsight they had no concept of green that's of true purple or black right they like they didn't know what they were missing out on so maybe like ignorance is bliss in that regard and we can talk about <laughs> ultimate power and how it released purple and black for you uh, when you talk mm -hmm. about it but but yeah that's a very good point i do think the cards in this set aged very well and obviously omnimon dominated more than just the first set he dominated the second third and you know arguably was okay in the fourth set as well so it's very easy to see just the impact this set had not only for getting the game started but for giving us our first true meta game uh lewis what are your thoughts on leaving it in s i feel like it has to go in s tier and for me it's not so much about the content of the cards but the overall set because this is the first set that the game ever had. And if this set wasn't successful, then the game wouldn't be successful. So, you know, today, a year later, the game is doing pretty good. I absolutely love the Demon Card game. And, you know, that BT1, that's what launched everything. So I feel like it, it has to go in S tier. It's just too iconic. Perfect, perfect. So we're leaving it in S, undeniably. Uh, Sean, Ultimate Power, talk to us about it. I mean, as we just said, this introduces purple and black, which is like... It introduces completely new um, play styles, if you will. Like the idea of like, oh, multiple blockers in a deck and reboot. And you have things that deal with your trash, right? Like I'm looking at this set list in particular and I'm like, this is where, did Lilithmon come in this set? Or is that the next one? That's the next no, she's one. In three. Uh, but this set okay. has Shine Greymon and that is. Yep. Okay, that's Ooh, true. That's my baby. Yeah, cause I feel like I looked at the yellow list from from one and it didn't have really much going for it to be well, frank enough. It's a the best Mon. card ever created in Slash Andromeda. <laughs> so I feel, Andromeda. Like, I feel I mean. like you're misrepresenting yellow there. Uh, it wasn't Blue <laughs> Omnimon, but it was more than enough for us yellow players. And then we got the king, which was Shine Greymon. So you know what? It's fine. It's fine. All, right. All right. I mean, I would put this in... I would not put this in S tier, to be honest. I would probably put this in A tier for myself. Just because, you know, I... I look back at this, there's some really great cards in here, but broadly speaking, I think it it I think it enhanced a style of play more than anything. It it does introduce a couple of colors, but broadly speaking, I would just say S uh, A tier for me. But I would <laughs> tend to agree with you because you know, New Evolution had that bonus of this was the start of something great. Whereas Ultimate Power felt like, okay, how do we take it? and give it its first real improvement, first real like patch, upgrade, whatever you want to call it. And it definitely did not miss the mark. It was a, an amazing set that, impact, that impacted the metagame super heavily, especially for Japanese players. This, 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 this format, Ultimate Power, was the first format I played in for the game, and it was amazing. However, I do want to agree with you that it's just an improvement. It's not by itself unique in any way. Like It needs new evolution to kind of prop itself up and be as great as it is so i feel like a tier for that reason makes the most sense how about you lewis yeah i feel like the new colors are great uh long term it's not super exciting like obviously having six colors is great but like the cards in those sets are like not that great although i do love the purple metal group yeah. i always loved them when we got to play with it uh but i would say in terms of like overall maybe i would even go down to b just so we have more like fleshed out but uh, if you guys want to put it on a tier that's okay with me yeah, I think, I think like low A makes the most sense for me for what this set actually provided. Uh, and I, I think it's just a great so A tier makes the most sense. The next one, though, I think we'll have some stuff to talk about. Uh, Lewis, go ahead and get us started with Union Impact. The actual yeah, name so of Yeah, so BT3 set. was the set where things started to get really crazy. You saw the design they wanted to look at and, you know, explore. We had things like Mastamon, Lilithmon, Craniumon. It's a really iconic cards that, you know, Craniumon still seems to play to this day. Lilith Loop is crazy. You guys already know I love Mastamon. So I think uh, BT3 was really, really good. It really expanded on the game. Uh, for that, I want to say it's also S tier. Okay, I would probably disagree with you actually. Here's and here's my thoughts. So if you look back at the original set one, two, and three meta, set three didn't feel too crazy actually. You know, Imperial was around. Uh, people were playing like Blitz Greymon, Crest Greymon, Craniumon, Shenanigans. Lilith was added to decks that were playing Value Purple from set two, but it didn't actually change anything immediately. Uh, we have the power of hindsight to look back on this set and go, it introduced hybrid uh, Digimon, green and blue evolution, whatever. It introduced 
uh, new cards like Lilith and Imperial that just changed how fast or how strong the late games were for certain decks. But in my opinion, playing in this format was kind of boring. <laughs> and it wasn't until <laughs> I got all the cards released at once in 1.0 that I was like, oh, wait a second, there's so much more we could have done uh, back in the original set three meta. So I personally think that wasn't that impactful immediately and it kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth for that reason and i want to put it in b tier first set uh believe it or not uh i would Sean, say if, what do you, what if you, you want to go down to a i'm okay we can bring it down to a like this is negotiation <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean as somebody who didn't play the meta right like all i can do is look back at bt3 as it's like as its own set like right I think about it like, okay, if you were somebody buying into the Japanese game, right? And like, oh, what set should I buy? Whatever. Like, I look at this card list and it's absolutely busted, to be frank. Like, the I, I looked at set one and two and set one and two don't feel very combo heavy, at least from a retrospective, right? But if you were going to tell somebody, hey, what should I go buy to build decks that are going to be really relevant in the future? And you think about the combos that like come with even like Ragna, you get combos that come with like... Um, all the Digisorption stuff, all the combos that come with that, the combos that come with Mastamon as well. Uh, this deck just seems to be in Lilith Loop also. Like this deck seems to introduce the like cards that will in the long term have a bigger impact than I think some of the other cards in set one and two. I that's why I, from a retrospective, would put it at S tier, but maybe in the moment, there just weren't enough pieces for it to compete when it came out in that way. Maybe I'm just still salty with how broken Sarah's mom with four hidden potentials was for this entire format. <laughs> and I'm not like thinking like the actual cards. I'm just like, so like the PTSD is coming back from having the double HPD turns, which would happen sometimes. Uh, but you know what? Thinking about it, Lilithmon and Mastamon are good enough for me to put this at S tier. So you guys are totally <laughs> I'm okay if we want to go A tier, so it's... No, yeah, no, no, you guys, I think you're <laughs> right. totally right. The cards in this set are broken, but because they're broken and I remember they're broken, I'm like, well, no one else was playing anything, so it was, like, boring, but it was fine. <laughs> and that's it for the Japanese sets. Uh, so if you guys do not know, the original English release 1.0 was a combination of cards from all three of these sets. Uh, a falsely advertised combination of cards, by the way. Because famously, Shine Greymon is on the cover of 1.0, yep. but did not come out in 1.0. And that is words. That is words <laughs> I will always have. But we're talking about 1.0 now. And as someone who played the game before it came to English and then has nonstop played the only English format since then, I can safely say that 1.0 was like their best of, you know what? Let's, let's really release the Digimon TC. All six colors. Plenty of cards to work with. Double the amount of SRs. It'll work out, I promise. You won't just pull three Diabormon alternate arts in six boxes. That's not going to happen to anyone. It definitely, it's fine, but it's cool. <laughs> uh, and while, and like where ev New Evolution was the start of the Japanese game and the whole entire like grandfather of the game, I think 1.0 was like the renaissance of the game. Like, let's make what was already cool even better and more popular uh, by spreading it out and making it more available. And uh, I personally love this set. So I'm gonna put it at S tier for pretty much the same reason we have New Evolution, except for the English form. Hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I would agree with S tier because I mean, this was like sink or swim moment for the Digimon TCG outside of Japan. Um, and they have like the fan favorites, a lot of them in the set. You have Omnimon, you have, you know, several War Greymons, I believe in this set. Um, and yeah, you do have purple for people who are, who just like want to play something different. Um, it, it's interesting. I, is Lilithmon in this set or is that in 1.5? No, she oh. came out in 1.5. Yeah, yeah, she came out in set yep. 1.0, but she wasn't really mm -hmm. used until set 1.5. No. Set. Uh, no one, uh, no, no one believed in Lilith as much as I did in set 1.0. <laughs> <laughs> but like overall, like, yeah, I really like, I really like this set. Um, I also like, it just... Uh, Blue Omni is just so good. It was so much fun. I will say it probably got very boring to play against in that format, but like it's a very powerful deck. And yeah, I, I would agree with you. S tier, S tier for me. Metal Guru Ruman. So good. Uh, BT1 Metal is so good. <laughs> yeah, I love that card. That card is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I'm also going to agree and say that it's S tier. I just have a lot of fun memories of the game. And I remember 
Uh, they did a good job putting in so much stuff in 1.0 that even when the game had just come out, I remember being to, going to locals and like already you had like, oh, that guy's a purple player, that guy's a black player, that guy plays green, he plays right, blue. Right. Like even though blue and red were like a little bit ahead or whatever, like everybody had something to work with. And uh, for that, you know, I think the set was fantastic and it did a great job of launching the game worldwide. So it's going to be S tier for me. And one more quick, just like in the back for 1.0 i think it did a good job like lewis said of creating player identities people that could attach to everything about this game immediately versus like wait until a second set came out to really see if there was something for them but i one thing i do love that i think bandai has always actively tried to do when it comes to the game is give us a different format than jp they want us to play a different game than japan did because they think they can create a better game for us with what they know like like i i don't want to say like japan's the prototype and we're the finished product but i want to say like they take the lessons they learn from that's releasing earlier in japan and then apply it to us and 1.0 for us was nowhere near as boring as like the first few months of set 1.0 new evolution because well blue omni and red omni were like the only things that existed but here we had value purple and we had like rookie rush strats being like actually developed and mastered and it was really challenging for a lot of players to actually compete in despite how simple the meta was you know we only had one set and two starter decks to work with but there was so much variety and it was so different from what we were expecting to get the original new evolution slash potentially old power cards yeah i mean i remember people playing like turbo titan green just like beat down yeah, 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 and yeah. even by the end of 1.0 we had like the yellow blue that was like the start of what became security control. So like there was a lot to work with. All right. And now we're going into 1.5. Personally, my favorite format to play in. But the set is interesting. So Sean, feel free to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, it was a nice format because I think the Turbo Omni meta, I think, got very tiring. And I that fell off quite a bit, actually, because you get, you know, Imperial Dramon as sort of a essentially the the successor to turbo omni in some ways like it's like a turbo deck but it doesn't i don't know it it it, it to me like it was a, it was a pretty fun deck to play against it was really tough to play against though too because it also turned puppet mon from a card that was in every deck to like well if i puppet mon your imperial you know something that and then you can just go into imperial german and i lose right so like i think that was that was probably a good thing uh ultimately <laughs> outside of that though the one downside to this set, which you did mention, was because I believe we got this set with the restriction already in place. Of two two weeks after, but it, like no two, big yeah. tournaments happened without restriction. List. Exactly. So like, I I do think that there was look, Sarasmon was still good, but I think there's a lot of green players, especially who are like, that was our one moment over the whole last year, <laughs> right, yeah. and you. You know, you basically took that away from us for like the play style, I guess, that is most indicative of green. And then it just it just never materialized. And like, that's not to say Sarah's Mon is wasn't good to a degree, but it just couldn't couldn't hold up, I, I think. So for me, I would personally put this set at A tier because of that. I, I think it shook the meta up. Um, it's got a lot of great cards in it, but I do think the restricted list uh, made the meta in the US healthier, but maybe less uh dynamic i see not not like it wasn't explosive it wasn't crazy yeah. like one like union impact had an impact on how people played the game no questions asked now some would say it created like one of the first like true pro decks in mm. saris mod because unlike blue omni you weren't just doing really consistent really resourceful things you were doing busted things you were just playing three megas in a single turn wiping out your opponent's entire board and then winning on the next turn were doing like some real crazy combos that decks could not hope to do uh and they did try to fix that with the list uh it was more so for nidhogmon stuff in set four but they chose to apply it to us earlier because they like were hey sarismon is really fast too and can use these cards we think it was a mistake to have hidden potential at four so we're just gonna give it to you guys uh and i think it actually did shake things up uh, it allowed shine to become way better because green is no longer just tearing it down all the time so shine could actually have a place in the meta because once again it was released later than advertised so if i had to play <laughs> shine Greymon in full power green meta when i never had to play it in full power set two meta i would have been upset but it's okay it's okay lewis how about you 
feel like because they did such a good job in making 1.0 so diverse, it kind of hurt what 1.5 could have been because everybody already had stuff to do. Like, sure, we got Jack Raid, but like they already had Lilith. And like we had these new archetypes that are, uh, I don't know what the right word for them, but they're a little dumb in my opinion. I'm not the biggest fan of them, like Imperial right, right, or right. Ragna. Or you're just like, I have my game plan and I execute it no matter what you're doing. Like I'm swinging with jamming 15 times. I make my level seven and I just do. And like, I don't know, it just wasn't that exciting for me. By the time that we got new cards, it was exciting that we had new cards. But I was already like, oh man, BT4, BT5, BT6 looks so cool. So I would bump it down to maybe B. So I know I was raving at the beginning of this that I love this format. I loved playing and experimenting in this format. Uh, coming up with stupid decks like Red Crest, Garuruman, or even Secure <laughs> to a certain extent. When the uh, archetype really got formed in the meta. But I would have to agree with you. And in fact, I want to put it even lower to C tier. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't know if you guys remember this. Originally, we had the November pre sale for 1.0. And then we yep. had the official release in February. And then we got this set in March. So we had about four months of 1.0. And then we were given a set that, have, that had half as many SRs. And the value wasn't really there for getting as many boxes as possible. So this felt like the first set people didn't want to collect they just wanted to get the cards they wanted and move on and i don't know those kind of sets always leave a, a foul taste in my mouth when i look back at them sure the cards are awesome but those are the only ones i got i didn't get any of the other so i personally think that this set in retrospective of everything else we have wasn't as impactful on the unity as 1.0 mm -hmm. would have so i want to put it at c for that reason I and mean, we could settle, put it at B. Buy in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, think, I'm fine with that. I, mean, I think yeah. B is, is, is more than fair. I love this format. This is my favorite format to play in because there are some <laughs> absurdly strong decks like Red Omni Shine and yep. uh, Crest. But it's just such a, like, I was just like, okay, finally, the set is here. And I was like, let's just build Shine and move on, right? That's all. That's, <laughs> that, that was my first instinct. Uh, Lewis, set four, great legend, all you, buddy. Okay, BT4 was, uh, it was a cool set because now we're past the BT1 to 3, so like now the game is really going out there, they're really exploring new things, and uh, BT4 I feel is one of those sets that has a lot of great hits and a lot of great misses. So like all the secrets are amazing, I love the Ancient Garurumon, Lucemon is amazing, I don't love Ancient Greymon, but I know he gets, you know, good later on in BT7 or whatnot, uh, and then the SRs, you just have some great ones like the Yellow War Greymon, who I still love to this day, but then some like just terrible ones. Like, I say this as someone who loved the Galgamon deck and really tried to make it work, but man, Matt Galgamon is just disappointing. And we have things like Plutomon, who, like, he's cool, but really not. Blastmon. So, I don't know. It's like, there's some great cards in that set and some stuff that's just really disappointing. It started being the point where it's like, oh, you got a pack, Matt Galgamon, 50 cents. And it's just, like, kind of sad. So, I don't know. I'm going to say uh, B tier as well. So I think what you're getting at is like, this was the first set where it was clear what was good and it was clear what was bad. In 1.0 yes. and 1.5, like it was mostly built on generic support. We didn't really get a lot of archetype specific stuff un un unless you count like Ragda slash Imperial stuff in set 1.5, which you totally can. But those archetypes were really cool and unique and, and they were the first archetypes. So I kind of like those. But set four was like, let's try to create an archetype, hybrids, but it didn't feel fleshed out, you know? Like, we got Lobo, we got a Goonie, we got the stuff. I honestly thought that originally set four was going to be when we were going to get the Tamers with Inheritables. And I'm like, okay, we're getting some creative stuff. The game is going to change. No, we just, got the, we just got the hybrids and not really anything super impactful. Because they're like, well, if we make new Tamers, time could be a problem. So maybe wait <laughs> on releasing that. Uh, I do think there was value in this set at like the top, top, top end, but there wasn't really anything impressive. Hits, you know, the hits mm. hit and the just like that. And I feel like that's a very average thing to say about a set. And I think B tier is like average place to put sets. Uh, so I, I would have to. Yeah, I mean, I would I would also put it in either B or maybe C tier for me. Um, I think it's B tier retrospective because eventually the hybrid archetype got better and apparently in bt7 gets even better so like yeah the rest of the secret rares uh other than lucimon like okay cool you're glad you pulled them six months later right. um but like at the time it was like okay yellow war gray cool 
cool. Maybe Nidhogg if you're like a green stand, because Nidhogg right. is crazy. And then I, that's it. I mean, Dan <laughs> Debbie's Dan Debbie's cool, but yeah, like it's very top heavy. And then it falls off a cliff. And like this was the set when I started to feel like, ah, oh, man, like other than Imperial Dramon, there was a window like after Blue Omni. I was like, Blue is just trash. Like <laughs> this was when the... blue was garbage. There was a point. It, <laughs> it wasn't set five. It was this set. This is when blue was just terrible. Yeah. So you're just sitting here with all the blue cards that you spent money on. You're like, well, I want to play blue. Well, I guess you're playing Rookie Rush, my dude. Because like that's it. That that's all you. Go. Or Imperial, maybe. I guess. But maybe, maybe. even Imperial wasn't so great because yeah, with the introduction of yellow of War Gray, this is when like yeah, Shine was great for yellow, but then War Gray. I think really war gray was the moment when yellow was like, Hey, get used to seeing the color yellow. If you don't <laughs> yep. like it, you're going to have a bad time for another like five months. So I, yeah, I would put this in B, maybe even C tier, to be honest. Like I also think to myself, if a, if a friend of mine was sitting with a bunch of boxes in front of him at a game store, what would I buy? Like, what would I tell them to buy? And I'd be like, do you need, do you care about Lusamon? Are you going to play security control yellow? If not, don't, don't bother buying this set just straight up like it's i don't think there's enough in here for most players yeah you know what i think i think sean has convinced me to put it at like the top of c tier or like just i'm okay with that <laughs> it, it just i don't know like i remember loving the format because i love yellow and i having fun yeah. just playing the best deck in the game but it was it's like oh no it, it didn't feel like power creep or anything it just felt like the game was going through a motion of this is what you should play and there's not really much else whereas 1.5 the format felt like hey you can play the best decks in the game you can play all these weird stuff too and it'll work out pretty well like security control or red crest and you could do well uh but in great legend we really were like nah the best decks are the best decks which is you know i, I don't mind it but but it, it can definitely bring down the mood you're playing in a big tournament for sure. yeah, i will I give like, them oh go ahead I, I like what you said about the like the archetypes and they're like hits or misses where it's like, yeah, before like we had generic stuff for all the colors, and now it's like, okay, here's the Gauga archetype, that's a miss. Here's the Pluto archetype, that's a miss. Here's the Blastmon archetype, that's a miss, right? Yeah. So. The one thing I will grant this set though is this is the first set for those people who like alternate arts. When Bandai moved away from that like heavy gold background style alternate art as like the the key one and started moving into what I think is a much more dynamic style, so. From like a, if you want to bling out your deck perspective, I actually think this was a, a really good step forward. And you see, like in future sets, they they go a little bit further. And I think the alternate arts in Digimon have they're they're very good. And so this was kind of the first step in the right direction for alternate arts. Yeah, the way I think about it is like if you look retrospectively at the original Japanese sets, they follow a pattern, right? Set one was kind of like set four, where they have like unique art styles. And then mm -hmm. in set two and three, they did like thematic ones with those gold backgrounds or those texturized secret rare cards. Uh, but then in set four, they went back to just like, you know what? Let's just take the card and make an alternate art version of that card and nothing else. Uh, in set five, we're gonna see like a mix of those two things. So I feel like they're just kind of combining things now. They're figuring <laughs> out what works. The, the other day, me and Lewis and Eli were like, hey, just make cool alternate arts. If you have a cool idea that you want to roll with, go ahead. I won't. I won't care. I'm sure they'll look. All right, uh, Lou, uh, Matt, my turn. Set five, <laughs> Battle of Omni. Jesus Christ. This is the first set that I looked at and I was like, okay, all of these cards are insane. So the game is gonna change. Uh, but in, in reality, only one deck is gonna be the king and that is Lord Nightmon. <laughs> so we got a ton of powerful cards in this set. Purple got a huge boost. Omnimon, Zwar Turbo, Lilith got born. We have Lord Nightmon dominating every single tournament to the point where people were like i'm just gonna quit the game until lord nightmon goes away and then we have <laughs> of course just red shoutmon blue hexablaumon just some fun stuff that is new but felt impactful and felt like it could actually do something uh so i have a mixed bag with this one now i love the cards that came out of this for what they provided to the game but the, the impact on the community wasn't so great long term with what people wanted to play with. Also, uh, yellow green rookie Russian control became much more powerful in the set. Also, a thing we didn't mention about set four was that Valderarm came out in that set, and that's hmm. a big deal. Uh, and this 
like the epitome of like oh yeah that is a big deal because now we have splash lord nightmon nightmon and balder arm that combination of four cards just made it impossible to have a board so all that in mind i actually really love this set <laughs> i think this set is crazy i want to put it in a tier immediately because of how strong it actually is and believe it or not my favorite formats usually are the ones where i can do really broken things with the cards available but the, but their but their colors are archetypes that i like so I, i'm very biased when it comes to like i, I want to do the most broken stuff and i want it to be stuff that i like that was battle of omni for me because yellow lord i mine felt like the best deck i ever played and it was so fun so crazy and uh, i love it <laughs> i personally like i think putting this at a i almost go to s tier with this set Ooh. um so here's my here's my rationale because i agree with you the actual format of bt5 was really rough especially because we had a delay of bt6 of right. like two months almost yes. so this it's like, like an eternity that, that is true right yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it was already oppressive because of lord knight and then you extended it and i'm like no no i did not want more of this but I will say this is the first set where I, as somebody who likes to build weird decks, I think like, you know, all of us kind of do to a degree. Um, but like once this set came out, I think a lot of rogue decks all of a sudden became more viable because we saw we saw support for older archetypes actually come back to the forefront in this. Like Diaboro is one. And yes, it didn't get the best until EX1. But all of a sudden it went from a deck like, why would I ever play that? To like, Actually, there's three Diaboromons now. You get Infermons, you get the Armageddon support. You also, weirdly enough, Chaos Gallant, great deck, Black War Growl, great card, but it helped out things like Dan Devi, which is like, what's my partner purple level six, right? And then all of a sudden, like with Chaos Gallant, Dan Devi is like, oh, this is actually a good deck and it it, it can it can do what I need effectively. Um, so beyond just the archetypes that they pushed in the deck, like Shoutmon and Lord Knight, I think things like Hexablau, yes, it's kind of an archetype, but it's an archetype that requires the, you know, promotional pack 0.0, .0 cards. And so that's why I would put that at a really high tier for me. I'd be fine with A, but like the fact that it finally started to recognize old cards as like, hey, let's revitalize play styles with like a couple card introductions. That, that's so why I like it. I was originally going to put this in S tier just because of the Diabormon support, but I didn't want to be that biased. But because you said it, we're going to S tier, <laughs> okay. baby. It's great. Well, uh, I was going to say B tier. Oh. They, I think they did a better job in BT5 than in BT4 with the archetypes, like the failed archetypes. I don't want to say failed archetypes, but the mm -hmm. archetypes that didn't dominate the game, they were much better, like Hexablau and Shatmon, and even like Chaos Gallon. Like, they were pretty mm -hmm. good, very playable, great cards, and like stuff that's good for the future. Uh, overall, though, I'll like quickly let me just say I love Nokia and the tribe support like I lo love that stuff uh, but overall the delay just hurt me so bad on this mm. that when I think back on BT5 I just that's all I could think about is that delay and then delay 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 we had like two extra months and for me that was a time where like you were saying people just kind of stopped playing the game they're taking breaks and I really felt it on my locals where we went from having 26 30 players and then you know 18 15 12 10, 8, 9, 7, and like I really felt it. And like by the end, it just everybody wanted BT5 to be over with. We just didn't want to play it anymore. We don't want the meta. We want new stuff. And that's just the feeling that I best remember with BT5, sadly. All right. Fine. I'll put it in A tier just to balance everything out. But I do agree with yeah. you. The community impact and like the memory of this set isn't that great. But that's why I want to make this list is be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. There is great stuff about this set. And just because you have that one memory of it doesn't mean it's the whole story of what the set was actually like. Uh, and if you do want to think about the Japanese version of this format as well, that was like, that was during the boom of like everything. You know? And it was like the biggest, I think the game got over there up until. So yeah, Battle of Omni, awesome set, but can leave a sour taste in your mouth depending on who you are. Double Diamond, John. Is that, is, yeah, this one's me. Um, Double Diamond. Oh, this one for me. This one's actually a bit of a, a mixed bag because we're we're in that meta effectively right now at the time of this recording. Yeah, and the EX one doesn't change much, right? And I'm like, there's a lot in this set that is just straight up. It, it's the main decks of the set, and I, I guess that's kind of always been the thing. But like, 
usually it's like the main deck of the set because of old cards as well that it revitalized. But this set, it's like, okay, Jessmon, let's give you the whole Jessmon package. Gabu Bond, Agu Bond. Um, like what other things were, do they just like hand me the entire archetype in one package, right? Like Bealstarmon, it's like, here's the package. Like Titamon, like a lot of the loop stuff. Now, I will grant you that Lilithmon got better because of things like Ginkaku Promote and... Right, right. But, in indirect legacy support. Those yes. cards are not made for Lilithmon, but they're just good yes. purple cards and she's a purple deck. And so I would say like, as a set on its own, you could buy this set and a player could feel confident, like, hey, if you get three or four boxes of the set, you will have a very good deck without, almost without needing some old cards. Like you could just do that. Um, but as in terms of like, when I, when I, I bet when we look back on this in like a year, um, I project that this will actually be less uh, loved as a set because it's so self-contained in my opinion. Like right. it's so archetype heavy. And this is the one set where I personally was like, hey, Bandai, I get that you're fleshing out archetypes. It's still early in the game, but like eventually you need to like land on like the 10, 20 different main archetypes and have sets that like don't introduce so many, like maybe one new archetype a set and then support. I think long-term that's gonna be a healthier state for the game. And this set I think is indicative of maybe going too far in the archetype direction. So a good example of like what you're talking about the problem is they introduced <laughs> new archetypes in at four but as we said <laughs> they were misses and they're like okay we're just not going to support those yeah or let's make new ones that's what set six felt like it's oh we're going to just support new stuff and just forget about this old garbage and i'm like that's fine if it's garbage don't try to make it nice you know don't put music <laughs> on a pig that kind of stuff but when you introduce new stuff don't make everything else before it feel irrelevant now because mm -hmm. like someone who never played set five, set four, set three, set two can approach set six and go, oh, this meta is completely different and I can just learn this game and not need to have fundamentals or tools from the other formats to actually become good. Uh, and I feel that's a false thing you should, like, I, I don't like teaching people that in a mm -hmm. eternal format like Digimon because you never know when you're gonna rock up against Lord Nightmon and go, what the heck does that even do? And now you're gonna <laughs> now you're gonna pay for it uh so yeah. where did you where did you want to put this set by the oh way? i would i would personally put this set uh, i would put it at b okay uh despite some of the alt arts too that i really love the agumon the gabumon but oh, dude. Still... oh the alt art game s tier no questions asked but oh, this yeah. is about everything this is about everything yeah not just the, not, not I, just the cards i i would put this at a b tier set because i feel like give it six months and um very few of these archetypes will see play how about you lewis uh, so I agree with what Sean is saying about the cards in general. Like, I do think, like, yeah, the bonds are, like, a little oppressive. And, like, it'd be nice if we got support for other things. I agree with all of that. Uh, one thing that I do want to bring up as a good thing for PT6 is the way it changed the way they're dealing with the cards. And what I mean by that is uh, the changes BT6 makes where, like, now the rares, they're all hollows. Like, I absolutely love that change. As someone who likes having, like, the rare cards, like, beautiful. So fantastic but wait change. Wait a minute, Lewis. And wait a minute. Wait. A minute. The, the blue rares look like purple cards. How can you tell? What, what if you? What if you squint and like? What, what if it looks like a purple card and I get DQ'd? What? <laughs> no, <you're fine. laughs> they, they look so good. And the great. SRs that they have texture now, like oh, yeah. oh, they're so much better than the old ones. Like I love that stuff. The box toppers being the babies and they're good and they look amazing. And then we have the ghost omni that like. Even though it might seem like a minor thing, it's just it has that thing where like everybody's like, oh, like you could put a pull a ghost on me, and like that's a cool thing. Like I, I like that in the game. So even though I never pulled one, like I think it's exciting. So for those things that are maybe not like meta dependent, but a BT6 uh, taking changes in the right direction, I think for the game. Right, right. When it comes to the design of the cards, maybe they could have chose a little little different things. But when it comes to the you know the changes for how they make booster sets. That's all great. Like, good job. Keep mm -hmm. doing more of that. Uh, no problems there. And I think that's a pretty middling opinion, you know, is like the set is good, but it can be bad sometimes. That feels like a perfect B tier to me. Fine. Uh, EX1. Okay. EX1, I think, is not a great set. I think it's maybe one of the weakest. Maybe it is the weakest. Uh, so I don't know. It's one of those sets where it's like, uh, the old cards, the art, I'm not a huge fan of it. There's some that it's like they're iconic and they look great. Like I love the alt art Gabumon. He's like very smug. I absolutely love it. Uh, and then there's some that are just like, hey, they just don't look that good. And like the new art is so amazing that like 
it makes me feel like we, we don't need the old art for the most part. And then we have, again, a lot of these like really missed archetypes, like the yellow angel stuff, the green, whatever they're trying to do, or like the red Garudamon draw for attacking player or some shit. I don't know, it's not great. I'm not a fan of it. Like most of the cards just seem kind of bad. Uh, value wise, it's just not good. The biggest thing about the set for me is like a couple key cards, like, you know, Ice Wall, Analog Boy. Uh, but for me, it's just Machine Dramon. It's like the one new archetype that's good and playable. Uh, but overall, like, you could really skip this set. We're talking about how we're on VT6 meta, but like, we're on EX meta, and like, it really didn't change much. So uh, I'm gonna say this is one of the worst sets, and I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm down to put it at D if you guys want. So we'll go ahead and start it at D. And you know what? Because we're talking about English EX1, I have to agree with you. Because the Japanese EX1 was not a full booster set. It was a, uh, for those that play Vanguard, it was an extra booster. For those that play, you know, uh, any kind of game, it's like a side set. Like the boxes are supposed to be half the amount of packs mm. as a normal booster box. But in English, they were like, you know what? We want to maximize the amount of packs you guys get given the delays. Here's a full booster release. Get as many as you want problem is that that drives down the value exponentially for all the cards that were supposed to be in here uh and i would have to agree with lewis if you don't play the one or two archetypes that actually get good support in here like imperial or machine or of course the abormon that gets the best supports ever gotten this set means nothing to you uh, if you're not a fan of the original game you're probably not going to love these alternate arts or, or, or sorry this alternate way of creating art cards because they do look frumpy is <laughs> it's kind of like the best yeah. word I can describe them as is they kind of look like not clean, but that's the point, you know, it's supposed to be like older vintage kind of stuff. And I don't mind it. It looks fine. I, I'm not a hit or miss guy when it comes to arts, but I can understand how some people won't like it. Uh, and for all those reasons, I would have to put it at D as well. I do think it's the worst major set we've had released. And the fact that I have to call it a major set, given how it's formatted is I think the big, the big loss. Yeah, I think that's that's a great because like I personally like I like the set in some ways, but I agree. I opened a number, a bunch of boxes of this and it's like the ultimate bulk set because you will because the set's tiny also comparatively. Um, so you will end up with so many extras. Um, so like what I would tell somebody about this set, like, hey, if you were getting four boxes, five boxes or whatever of the old sets, get two get two of this and that's all you need like i would say d tier as well in terms of everything i will the one thing i will say in defense of the set a little bit is i do like how this set focused on generic color support now i and i think that if this had been a combo with like this plus another set to make it a full set because you're right it's not a full set that had archetypes I think then we would have had like a BT5 level set again, where it's like some generic support, some archetype support, you know, but the generic support in here, it's good. It's, you know, there's a bunch of old decks that do do really good stuff with it. But yeah, if you're buying it as a sealed product, uh, yeah, no, the, the prices on all this stuff too is just like rock bottom, I think. And it will be for a while. Okay, uh, before we move on to starter decks, I want to give you guys a brief hypothetical here. Uh, sorry. I'm... So before we go into the actual starter decks, I want to give you guys a brief hypothetical here. What if EX1 was how it was designed? A, I think, 12-card set at MSRP at like $30 to $35 instead of $65 to $70, depending on where you went. Would that have changed your opinion as to where it should go? I would have made it infinitely better, yes. Potentially. I, I think it would depend on like how available the product is, right? Because usually specialty sets like that, I think about like Pokemon. They have Shining Fates, they have Hidden Fates. Yes. Like they have those same specialty sets. And because it has so many alternate arts, it, it if they didn't print enough of it, I think it could have been a huge problem. Because people would have been then chasing the, you know, alt arts and stuff like that. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it would be more fun to open because you get less dupes. You get less just bulk effectively. Um, but personally, I would have liked a set where there was a higher... They did have two alternate arts a box, but I actually would have loved if they had like done four or even... I, you know, I, not about the value, but about like the how fun it is to open the packs. I think even more alternate arts would have been very much appreciated in this. Because again, thinking back to Pokemon, the way they do shinies like 
you know, they have a higher pull rate than some of this stuff. So like, I mean, you're, I mean, you, you would not be wrong in saying the actual cards to pull from this set are the old cards. So just yeah. make more of those that we can pull in a set and we'll instantly increase its value to us. Um, yeah. And yeah, I would, I would like if, if it was a regular like class uh, e extra booster and not like an actual set, I would have rated it higher because there'd be mm -hmm. in, already more value given to every single card. But Sean is right. That value would be created by scarcity and not by the cards actually being better. And so it's good that there's more value in the set, but the reason why is bad. And that's why I think I probably would have only put it like CT, not like super higher. Because, you know, getting one or two good playable archetypes out of an extra booster is actually really good for the meta. But in like the value of the set, it's like, uh, so yeah, D tier makes the most sense, and that is every major booster set for the Digimon TCG released in English and a couple released in e, Moving on to the starter decks. Okay, and I believe it's my turn, and we're starting off with Gaia Red. And this, as someone who actually played starter deck meta, where all you had were these sets. Obviously, you always had uh, the original 1.0, but people would play starter deck only tournaments back in the Japanese and Gaia Red was like tier zero, and it was just like the most broken thing ever. Gaia Force is in here. The Gray Mom with plus security is in here. There's just so much going on with this set that not only retrospectively is amazing, but in the moment was just, oh, this is unstoppable. Cool, 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 cool. So I wanna put this immediately at S tier because as someone who recommends this game to people and like gives people advice, originally being able to go oh just get gaia red that's the best deck starting off with that's great and build from there learn the game figure out what you like and then change your color if you want to or stick with red it's probably gonna get a ton of support good to go uh what do you guys think i i so i would agree with you that it is an s tier product in terms of how much people need this product like if you want to play red you have to get a bunch of the cards in this product in order to really effectively play it so from a need, it's an S tier. From a, this is getting into like some of the things I think Bandai does not always do the, the best. Right. From like a accessibility, I would put it at D tier. Because like, you think about it, like they did, there was like a print shortage, which is out of their control to a degree, but you put the only blocker in red in the starter deck. It's one thing to be like, you don't have access to a sec plus one, which is like, okay, boohoo, you gotta go slower, fine. Um, but like, and the, the Gaia Force, don't get me wrong, Gaia Force was great. There was a time when I think Gaia Force on eBay were like $20 each. More, more like, than the MSRP, like twice right. the MSRP of the, of the, <clears throat> of the, of the whole deck. Started, and it yeah, was yeah. just like, oh my gosh. Um, so like, from like a pure power standpoint, S tier, from an accessibility, I'm like, there are necessary cards in this right. thing if you want to play the game at a competitive level. And I'm like, oh, that's your... Bandai, you're doing Bandai things again. Don't, don't, don't put needed cards in products that are hard to find. Uh, oh, yeah, that's... so because we're in the set six meta like universe and we have the yes. the Gallant Monster deck, that that problem is a, a yes, bit that fixed now, it. and they're more accessible now. So like we can say now, I think that problem is fixed because you can go to Walmart yes. and probably find one of these, no problem. <laughs> However, it, originally, yes, it was a big deal, and people that weren't a part of the original pre-sale were struggling to get the during the official because most either didn't have them or weren't going to get them anytime soon. So that that is a big deal. It definitely leaves a sour taste in your mouth again for the memory of this mm -hmm. product. Again, I think the I think the impact oh, yeah. is just the great, man. Like it's it's like it's so good. Such a good product. How about you? Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to agree with both of you guys. I think the contents of the product were fantastic. You got everything you wanted. Like it's the perfect starter deck, right? It's a deck you can take. It's playable. And you can very easily upgrade it with support from the booster set. You have, you know, boss monster, Digimon of all levels, blockers, options, all the good stuff. Uh, fantastic. Uh, but like Sean is saying, it was a bit of a struggle. Like, sure, I picked it up for $9.99 and it's a fantastic product and I would happily recommend it to anybody. But I also remember shops selling it for $40, you know? So uh, <laughs> I think overall, though, it is a great product. And those things, yeah. sometimes they are out of bandage control. So I'm okay if you want to put it S tier or if you want to go lower because of the issues, also fine with me. I think given what we know now, S tier is the most fair thing yeah. to put it in. But if we did this like four months ago, I would have been like, oh, guys, like, <laughs> come on, guys. We, we, we can do better than this. Yeah. Uh, Lewis. Oh, no, no, no. Sean, Kakaitis huh. Blue, over to you. Kakaitis Blue. Um, I would, this one is, I think, A tier 
I'm just gonna go straight into it. It's not quite as good as the red because yes, it does have a an equivalent couple of cards. Like it has Hammer Spark and Kakaitis Breath, which are so from an option card standpoint, Hammer Spark, Kakaitis Breath, Kaiser Nail are all crazy cards for blue. And also crazy cards for not blue, right? Like you see <laughs> Kakaitis being used in like set control and Beale Star. Kaiser Nail is just like the ultimate combo card, to be frank. Yeah. Like if you are if you are a deck builder and you don't have a playset of Kaiser, if you're like a wacky rogue deck builder, you need a playset of Kaiser Nails. Just you got to. Um, but outside of that, like, yeah, the Plesio was necessary in Turbo oh, Omni Meta. Oh, huge. So in its in its format that it came out, it was important. But over time, I actually think that the impact of the set has gone down relative to the red. So that's why I would put it at A tier from a current view standpoint. Um, but, you know, still still a very good starter deck. And you know what? I would tend to agree with you as well, because again, as someone who loves just advertising starter deck, v starter deck meta, I think it's actually mm. a fun meta to play in. This, this deck actually, I think was the worst one <laughs> to, to utilize <laughs> because in the actual box, your one form of removal gives your opponent back their level six, which in these decks, we only had four of them, which was stupid at the time, uh, was really needed actually. Uh, so I would have to agree for everything you said, as well as like, it's not the best starter deck, like the actual cards you get. Well, Lewis, how about you? Uh, for me, the red and the blue are like side by side. I think like if you had a, you had a friend who was a new player and like, oh, I couldn't find a red deck, could I buy a blue deck? Same thing, right? Like, I think they're both fantastic products. So uh, I'm okay with the big S tier, A tier. It's fine for me. They're, they're both great. Yeah, the way I like to think about it is when you're buying starter decks to get into a game, having options that are more or less equally good, like red and blue, are nice. But I do think, given what we know about the game, being big brain lads, we know that the red <laughs> is actually, like, the best in the hands of someone who knows what you're doing. But in the hands of someone who doesn't, it's even ground for everyone, no matter who you are. Uh, or, or no matter what cards you have, I should uh, So I think it's totally matter what uh lewis heavens yellow please be gentle i love this okay yeah so it's funny you were talking about the star deck meta because i never played that meta uh so for me the yellow star deck felt like the weakest of them by far because most of the time it just felt like you were paying ten dollars for two unimons because <laughs> you were getting the deck for the unimon that was if like the were, only good thing in there to build shine yes but <laughs> so i don't know i just like out of all the starter decks uh, again, if I would recommend to a friend or a new player, the yellow would be the one that I would last recommend. It, like, the worst of the bunch by far. It was still maybe a good starter deck, I don't know, but... I don't know, I'm not a fan. Like, the new starter decks are much better in terms of quality of cards overall. Oh, yeah. And the yellow starter, maybe it was good in the meta, but, like, overall, I don't know, I just, I'm not a fan of the cards. I think it's the weakest by far, so... I would go down to, like, a B tier. Oh, wow, okay, so... I have to disagree with you, but I should go lower. I put it in C tier. Once again, okay, I'm okay with I, love this, drop this C -tier. I love this product, okay? I love this product, personally. Love yellow. And in the starter deck meta, it's actually, I think, the best one because your form of removal is Serapimon, and he can just attack over stuff. He can attack over everything. He can lower it by 4,000. That's broken. And you can gain memory with the Andromon. Also broken. But, I'm sorry, but it's the point of, <laughs> I like this no one else really likes this set. You would buy this just to get your blockers, and that's it. The one you would get because you're like, I need, and not the one you get because you like the cards or because uh, it's actually. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. E tier for me, no question asked. But that's actually a selfish. Set. I, I want. No, it I'm done. Let's put it on C tier. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm down with C tier as well. Like to your to your point, Lewis. Like Unimon, uh, and if you were at the time playing Shine Gray, I guess you need TKs. And Anjuomon, right? The recovery plus one. Other than that, like, and the Patamon, I guess. But like, they're very specific cards. Like the option cards are, like, honestly, even especially after some power creep, the option cards are ap absolutely garbage. Like they, Dude, <laughs> they're bad. Yellow is one of the devious cards I've ever read, man. Yeah, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, I would put it at C tier as well. <laughs> Just straight up. Make it, just make it minus 11,000 DP, and it becomes mm -hmm. a broken card. What are you thinking? <laughs> okay, Giga Green. Now, this is probably the start of what I love they do with starter decks. However, they don't do it in English. So, in Japan, the starter decks come out well before the actual booster sets do, like a month and a half before. And these are the things that Bandai uses to introduce new mechanics 
like for example digibird like for example memory boost or delay for the for the gallant mon and old force one this is the tool they utilize to archetypes and then they give us the full fleshed out versions in the booster set uh, also for jogress with starter deck uh, 9 and 10 we don't have those yet so we're not talking about them that's another example of what i'm talking about however in english these usually are released side by side with the sets that have the mechanics out gg burst for set four and set six to flash like other shenanigans created seven and eight and i think releasing side by side actually diminishes how impactful these starter decks could have been uh in the original i want to say pure starter deck meta for set four giga green was the reason uh what, what's it called uh hidden potential discovered got limited it was the reason it got limited because hercules kabuterimon was the first card that was like hey this is not fair anymore because i'm just losing my entire board he's gaining plus two dudes and i'm also getting dealt damage this feels like too many things going on for free that's a little bit broken and then it got like fully solidified with nidhogg money uh but for that reason i think giga, giga green was one of the impactful things because it basically the reason we have a banned restriction list essentially however in english we had it before it just kind of came out and herc was kind of cool and you would maybe play it as like the alternate to your nidhogg mon strategy in set four format but it that's if you were playing green and if you didn't have your grand kuagamon for green okay so in japan easy s tier in english however i i want to put it in b tier honestly like it's the best it's the strongest of all the starter decks in box probably but in terms of like actually impacting the community and the meta and everything it's not that crazy yeah i was my, my brain went to b tier as well because yeah I, as i don't know the J japanese history it's very interesting to learn that like their starter decks come out before because ours coming out after sets are released typically does feel like it takes a lot of the wind out of the sails of starter right. decks um so yeah i put it in b tier from the context of the the western world because needle spray is good kabu terimon good um tentomon is good hey, look if you want to play green or even like rookie rush some good cards in here for that and herc is an interesting card um it's one of those awkward ones where it's like you really got to be into like board clear beatdown strategy to play herc but like maybe that's you know, if that's your play style you kind of it's a good card for that but otherwise skippable in some ways I would make a push for A tier. I think the green starter deck was insane. It gave us the best boss monster that I think a starter deck has ever had. And I know that, like you were saying, maybe he got overshadowed by the Grand Kuaga in North America, but I still played the Hercules. I had great success with it at locals. Like, he's still a great boss monster, and he might still even be decent later on as he's a Kabuterimon, so he's always gonna have that support. Uh, on top of that, we had the one cost blockers, which is fantastic. Good rookies like the Palmon, I love that card. Needle Spray. Uh, in the Ultimates, we have the Mega Kabuterimon that trashes security, which is a insane right. effect. I love that card. Like, even if you're not playing as a 4 in a deck today, like, it's a card that you always want to have in your collection. That one day you could be like, oh, this is good in this meta or this situation. Uh, so I think overall, the green deck was fantastic and Hercules is really good. So I would make a push for A, but if you guys want to do B, I'm also okay with that. I right. think it's so safe for us to say that all of these starter decks improve hard quality that comes out yes. from the previous mm -hmm. ones and thus they are naturally like put above i think in our minds but i do think that the impact of green is nowhere near as much as the rest uh even though the cards in it are the strongest cards we've had yet we've had yet it's kind of like the you know double diamond mentality is these cards are more powerful than everything else we've had but the impact on how we actually use those cards didn't feel so impressive to me personally looking back at everything and that's just not true for Gaia Red or even Kakaitis Blue. So I think B, B tier is a fair thing. <clears throat> uh, Machine Black. I had to double check that name. Machine Black for Sean. <laughs> I This is an interesting one. I am has, I I tempted to put this in D tier. Oh. I know that when it came out, like <laughs> a one cost Evo blocker in Dark Tyranno was good, right? right? Black has a problem, which everything costs a million memory to Evo. So between this... And I want to say, did Waru Manze come out? No, that was it. Came out five. a bit after that. He yeah, came out and set, so. it took us five sets to get a two drop <clears> vanilla. That oh my was, god! Oh. <clears throat> but like, you know, so it, it's taken Black a long time to get those cards. But 
other than that, like looking back at it from, from the perspective now, there's really not a lot. Like even if you want to run D Brigade, the four drop commander mon that's 5k, like it's not, you need it because you want as many commander mons, but it's not the one that you want to see most of the time. Like if it comes off for free, cool. Otherwise, meh. Um, the card that's, I think the most impactful out of this set is that blocker inheritable mega oh, yeah. It's just, this is, I think the first card that gave and i think it's the only card that gives blocker as an inheritable generically like andromon will give it two machines or cyborgs or whatever like but be, the ability to give any level six that can evo over a black digimon blocker is crazy and i would say if if you want to play any kind of black or even black red strategy because you know the evo combos work that way um it's almost a necessary playset because it's just it's just too good in some ways um so that that might boost it up to c tier just one card might boost it up to c but i'm i kind of would lean d tier with this deck in my opinion so i'm a black fan boy i agree <laughs> hard d tier no question because once again the cards in this are stronger than the other ones maybe not the red ones but blue and yellow ones but also the impact is so minuscule if you don't play black this does not matter to you because you're not only not going to play the cards in it you're probably not going to play against these cards uh but as someone who did love playing black omni in that five format black turbo omni defeat this was a super useful product in terms of giving us the valuable cards we needed you know giving his word defeat a blocker inheritable is insane uh giving it a uh, one drop evolution that i could easily go to and also have a blocker is insane but I do think that overall, besides that very niche case, it does absolutely, uh, even nowadays, because the only real card we see is Mega Dramon and Command Dramon, like you said, out of this deck. We don't see, what's that stupid, Jet Blade, or we don't see <laughs> uh, Dark Side Attack, even though I love those cards. I like, like no the card, yeah. Them. Like, Dark Side Attack's good, don't get me wrong. Dark Side Attack is slept on, but, but it's slept on, you know, like, it's not actually appreciated in the format, so I think that's, like, even more reason to put it in D. I'd probably put it higher, but I know I'm I'm being objective, I think, as much as I can when it comes to making this. But I think D is pretty uh let me quiz you guys real quick, uh, no cheating. Do you guys know what the effect of the I think it's a blitz on, right? Is the boss monster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, has, so, what is his has, effect? so he has plus security attack and then Digiburst 2, give one of your Digimon plus four thousand to end your opponent's next turn. I uh, did you know that, Sean? I mean sure no <laughs> I, like, no, I, I don't know what he does because like he's so forgettable will, you know <laughs> i was yeah he both the boss monsters in this deck are very forgettable um as opposed to to your point like herc the boss monster in the green one i would agree with you at least from earlier like that's the most memorable of maybe all the boss monsters in all the starter decks Probably, like yeah like plesio was memorable not because of plesio but because it was a great turbo. It was great ramp into Omni. Right, right. But like, I don't remember Plesio. I remember Two Drop Vanilla. You know what I'm saying? I right, say right, exactly. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So it's just there's so it's so forgettable. The the top end. Yeah, I feel like the the Black Star deck is like the yellow deck of the second set, the most forgettable. It's like yeah, you're paying ten bucks for maybe the blockers, maybe the Mega Dramon, but overall, worst impact, not exciting at all. Uh, D tier for sure. Venom Violet, over to Lewis. Okay, now the purple deck I actually love. Uh, let me start by saying that I love the boss monster. Kresko Rumon is fantastic. And uh, in BT5, one of my most fond memories was playing a Nokia Kresko Rumon deck in purple because you have the full Gawu Garuru chain. And he's, there's some cool combos you can do with it. You know, Digiburst, Restand, Swing for two checks at 12. Uh, going to Sword after, get a bunch of bodies. Uh, but on top of that, it also has some great cards like Nailbone, which is fantastic. The one cost blocker for purple. Uh, I know that, you know, every color has it, but for purple, it felt like a big deal. Being able to, you know, get a cheap evolution and it being a blocker and a Devimon, right? So it's like the best of the bunch. Uh, so overall, I, I think the purple deck was really good. Uh, I For me, it's like just there with the green one. Uh, but you guys put green in B, so I want to put purple in A and... You guys told me, I guess. <laughs> I would I would agree with you that the purple deck does have more impact than black and possibly impact. I mean, uh, not only for that cool one deck that you talked about with the 
tribal but in purple but it's also fun cards like the gabumon which nowadays is yeah. like the main star of the discard engine you have cute things like the devimon one drop blocker that was heavily utilized in set five for every purple and even in set four for the metal garumon deck but i would still personally want to put it in b given everything we said about green uh but i would agree with you that b is probably the lowest i would go with this because it does provide a lot of value and it is a pretty good starter deck in terms of starter deck meta and that's that's what appeals to me how good are these guys against each other <laughs> i mean i would agree b tier i i almost want i personally i sometimes lean a like a tier i look at the cards here and like the top end the middle is not great but the options in the the like level threes and the devimon blocker like i love that they chose to make the blocker a devimon and that they chose to make the two drop a devimon because dan devi like this came out and dan devi was like yes we are all mm -hmm. over this um yep. and then nailbone and deathclaw you think about like a versa like two very versatile cards um nailbone is very versatile because obviously you need purple digimon cards and so like it's good in beal star it's also just good in like metal gururumon when that was you know played um deathclaw i also really like i think that's a card that over time you may see more and more play because it's a one cost that deletes things and if you have things with on deletion effects right that can do something it doesn't specify deleting a specific color or anything it's, it's very unrestricted which i found surprising given we were already at like four sets in i think bandai's done a pretty good job of like starting to restrict things by like adding like little color requirements there to certain cars so they don't end up being broken down the line but i i think b tier is fair is, is fair for this um because if you don't play Dan Duffy, I don't think there's quite as much here for you, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think B feels the most fair. It does a lot for the purple color, and so does the Giga Green deck. That's super fair. Moving on, we have Gallantmon Red. Boring name. It's the name of dude. That's fine. Uh, starter deck 7. I I don't want to be like a broken broken record here, but the red starter decks, man, they they just clap hard, bro. Red is one of those colors where the card quality is so good. Like I may only have two or three cards in my hand, but they're all gonna win me. The so it's cool. I don't need <laughs> ten cards, you know, like little decks need. Uh, I, I I don't I don't need to draw and gain memory infinite blue decks do. I just need the three cards that I play. Uh, any three cards that I. Play. That's what I got from this starter deck. This was the highest quality of cards I've ever seen starter deck for pretty much any game ever and i want to put it in s tier for that reason and again for my own personal reason probably the top of the starter deck at a game probably uh i mean i could see it being at the top because i think about this compared to the original red starter which i think was is the top i think it would be s tier because you've reprinted gaia force so i like that they listened to the community and were like hey we need gaia force like you know even if you think that there are better option cards, like the fact that a semi-staple red option card was only available in a starter deck, I think reprinting it was huge on Bandai's part. And then like, yeah, Guillaumon is just, <clears throat> it's just good. It's a draw card, like red needs draw. It doesn't have a lot of draw in a lot of things. So the Guillaumon inheritable is great. Geo Gray, like if you're playing anything that you want to pop stuff out of security, it's a good option there at your level four. And Lightning Joust, Lightning is Joust problem. is problem. stupid. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it remains a problem long term. I don't follow Japanese meta, but like, it doesn't have a color requirement. You can play it when you are at the same amount of security as your opponent. It boosts your DP and gives Sec plus one. And like, I would be fine with that if the security effect was nothing. And then like, that's the downside. It's a. It's a. It's a big splashy card. Do you draw it or not? But it comes to hand. I'm like, why? Why? I mean, like, I don't know. That so that alone, like, uh, Lightning Joust is a card that like one day might be a problem no, <laughs> if it isn't no, already. No. Lightning Joust is just annoying <laughs> right now. I don't think it's, but it is a it it, it is it's a plus good. for the deck. I'm just like, yeah, wow, a starter <laughs> deck with this many stupid cards in it. Cool, cool, cool. Makes sense. Yeah, I feel like the red started is definitely uh, S tier in terms of the card quality. Uh, fantastic. You have a great boss monster. Uh, I like some of the, like the Gilmon forecast. I think that guy's super underrated. Uh, you guys didn't talk about Atomic Blaster. Also insane. Oh, yeah. I like that they reprinted those key cards, but they reprinted them and then they gave them different art. 
So it's like, hey, if you're a new player and you don't have these, like, pick them up. You need those. But if you're an old player, like, hey, I bought the Red Starter, like, oh, well, now I get the Dark Tyranno with new art and Guy Force with new art and the Monodrome on it. Like, that's really cool. Uh, on top of that, the starters follow that BT6 uh, shift in how they're going to do things, which is much better. So now the starter deck has multiple SRs, right? The Gilmon is SR. He has that texture. The rares are hollows, which is way better. And then on top of that, you got the memory boost, which were absolutely mm -hmm. crucial for the game. Fantastic. Uh, so for everything the starter deck is doing, card quality, changes to the game, reprints, everything is just fantastic. Easy S tier. On yeah. to Blue All Force. John, go ahead and take it away. Oh, Lordy. Uh, I mean, the Blue All Force deck is. Sorry, I'm pulling it up here. Uh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> uh, I would put it in B tier. I mean, I just. If I'm comparing this to Red, which is the context of where it comes out, like, like Dracomon is good for some decks, like, you know, Dramons are in a lot of different colors. So it's like a nice, splashable rookie if you want some search. Um, Cordramon is obviously broken contextually in the right decks. But other than that, like maybe, maybe this gets particularly good, like the Vmon's all force like line in future sets. You, Steven, may know more about that than I do. But like right <laughs> now, it doesn't feel like it it added to an archetype in all force that people enjoy. People like that Digimon, but all force still kind of feels like Imperials you know awkward cousin right like it's just trying to do the same thing as imperial but worse um and the option cards here are fine but not they're just kind of variations on option cards that blue already has that might cost one less or do something slightly different but they're not really that different like lightning joust does not have a companion card really like there's atomic inferno but that only works for hybrid so like really it doesn't have like a thing that you could replace it with. That you're like, oh, I don't know which one I want. Um, whereas I don't feel like this deck is quite as impactful. So B tier for me. There's a thing I always try to do really, really like textually when it comes to judging products like these, I try to ignore the cheerleader effect, which you guys know what that is in real life. It's when mm. like a group hang out together. They all seem more attractive than they are because they're in a group. If you really might think differently of how attractive they are not. Might be less actually. Uh, so when it comes to judging all force, I always judge it with Gallantmon right next to it because I'm like, mm. oh, these two are pretty much the same thing. But no, no, they're very, very different. Uh, and I actually want to put all force in C tier because okay, fair there's enough. a lot that happens in Gallantmon that does not happen in all force. Number one, don't get a good secondary boss monster in Shine Greymon. Shine Greymon in red, it's actually a good card. Piercing and plus security. Wait, I like Slayermon. That's a great card. It's a great <laughs> card. Atomic Blaster. You don't get any form of good removal except for Bay Wingblade, which is just like a better Kakadis Breath, but Kakadis Breath is already bad, so it's like putting lipstick on a pit, kind of, uh, in comparison to the other removal spells. And when it comes to reprints, you get two Hammer Spark in one Old Force, but you get four Gaia Force in the red one. People forget that. That's crazy to me. <laughs> Actually insane. So I want to put this like lower, not necessarily comparing it with Gallantmon, but comparing it again to Gallantmon. Direct mm. comp. Yeah, I think when you look at it side by side to the Gallant deck, it's definitely worse. Uh, I think it's okay because like, like Sean is saying, like, yeah, there is no Lightning Joust equivalent, but it's okay because sometimes that happens the other way. Like in the X collection, Blue got Ice Wall, and red got like a option that kills a blocker or something that's Begone not something playable says, at all, right? Baptism yeah. by fire. Oh, I tried to play so... it in a deck and it's bad. It's yeah, crazy. like sometimes <laughs> a color a, will get something crazy and the equivalent will not happen. And I, I think that's fine, right? Uh, that said, though, the, the blue deck is definitely worse than the red deck. Uh, but I do like Slayer Dramon. I mean, he's a cool Digimon. Like, I like him. He's just a badass dragon. And I played him quite a bit with uh, a Sulong. He's a good finisher. Uh, but, you know... It's not the most exciting, so I'm down to put it way below the red one. Uh, B as or C someone is who fine. loves Examon in context for the Digimon oh, we TC need him as a card. The, the Slayer Dramon and Break Dramon we have aren't it cheap. We need we need something better, okay? <laughs> we need something better before yeah. our boy comes, okay? They cannot. Do we need Examon though. Yeah. Uh, so I'll put it at the bottom of B tier, but in my heart, it's. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, and that does it for all the starter decks. We're now moving on to the promotional. These things either come as their own product or they come alongside 
products, but most of them do have unique cards and impact the community metagame. And we're gonna talk about each one, starting with Promo Pack 0.0, .0 arguably the first product for the English version of the game, because it was a promotional. And he has some, I have a bunch. <laughs> if you guys have a bunch of those binders, you know what they are. Uh, go ahead, Lewis. Uh, what's your rating for this? Uh, I mean, I think it's okay. I would probably put it on B tier. Like, it's cool to like introduce the cards and tell people how to play. Uh, there's some cards in there that are like at the time were like unplayable. Like, nobody was playing the Gomamon or the Padamon or things like that. And then over time, people are like, "Wait, these cards with support are pretty good." Like, I love that Padamon. And like, I picked it up when he was like a dollar. And like, you know, the Gomamon is good now. So I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, those cards at the time felt like extra rookies that you did not need and now they're like hard to get promos that some decks require like the Hexablau so it's it's kind of hit or miss for me I mean uh, it's cool but I'm, I'm not like super into it so it's the middle of the pack like B tier is fine for me it's a weird thing to judge because the moment you're just like oh this is cool this is fun it's not gonna do too much for me but it, it says a lot about the game you know like the Agumon promo is like the mascot for the game you know like that art mm -hmm. of that card is on tz like presented to the world and so that impact alone makes it i think important for the history of the game but you're right the cards are mid you know like they weren't that good when they came out they became good some of them and then some, some of, of them, them are yeah. still just garbage poop who don't even exist like what does the gabumon even do like on play get rid of uh, the gabumon trashes the stores yeah like the gabumon gabumon is terrible yeah yeah so you know it's like it's like a, like if you think so of it as like a set it's like half good half bad but if you think of it as the history of the game you're like this is important this got people excited about the game so i would agree b tier maybe low a tier sean where do you think it should i mean it probably goes in the b tier because some cards are playable to a degree I think that over time it will become C tier or even D tier because I think a lot of these cards eventually just get power crept. Um, you know, you think about Gabumon and Gomamon, like, don't, don't get me wrong, gaining a memory when you trash something, it's just good. If you want to play that kind of deck, a Hexablau deck, that's why that is, it, it, that's why it exists. But like the Gabumon kind of just gets power crept out because of yeah. Sora and Joe, right? Like Biomon get its power crept out because of things like Guumon and and other draw one effects like so i think a long term there's only two cards here that that really have an impact which are the patamon to Luis's point like recover one when you're at one or fewer it's just good on a rookie that's only cost four that's good um and the gomamon but uh i will say like as something i'll say broadly as all, we get into all the promo packs i i am so torn on the idea that promo like exclusive promo pack cards like like uniques it's just such an awkward and i'll say that now before we get into the rest of the promo yeah, packs yeah, yeah. because i think anybody who plays bandai games it's i don't know if any other card game does it like this i don't know if Yu Gi Oh or oh, it, oh maybe oh, it's unique. other games do it a oh, hardcore okay Yu -Gi -Oh! was, it, Yu -Gi -Oh! was probably the first one to do it badly but they did it for Prize cards. They didn't do it for oh, promo cards. They did oh, it for prize card cards. Virus, right? Crush card virus. Yeah. Was one of the first prize cards, and it was literally a game destroying yeah. card that only well, like a handful of card. people, like literally a handful of people, like ten people yep. could own. So, uh, like this, this exists in all games, and it's a question that I think game developers ask themselves: create alternate art cards that don't really incentivize people to play in tournaments if they don't like those, or do we make unique promo cards that some are good some are bad but overall they're nice and people like them it's tough because then you run the risk of creating broken cards that might be hard to get for some and it's tough and when that happens people notice and they go that's not good but when we get the opposite and we go cards that are just reprints of already have bushels and bushels of they're like that's boring so it's it's it's, it's an impossible question i think to answer correctly but yeah. I do think 0, 0.0 is a good example of doing it right. You know, you have cards that immediately yeah. aren't that great, but could become better. So if you invested in them or got them for the promotional pack, you're going to be rewarded. And then you're going to see that you're going to go, maybe I'll have faith for the next time they make something kind of mid. I guess and the thing. I will say the one thing I'll give them credit for, they printed the 0, 0.0 packs as like sort of like entry and prizing for the very first big tournaments. Yep in like February, March. But then I think they realized people wanted the cards and so they printed these booklets yep. like three or four months later, which became much more readily available. So 
I Bandai does have a history though of printing of reprinting cards that are uh, very well played that were not in high supply. So I will also give them that. It's just there's always a window of time where like things can be yeah, crazy yeah. expensive. And I feel like when that, when that window of times happens, it's like <clears throat> they could have saw this coming. They could have done maybe a better job of preparing for this, <laughs> right? Like it happens all the time. But uh, yeah. but sometimes it's just like oh I guess not. Uh, so this one's interesting. We have the first ever box topper from 1.0, and this includes the Garuruman, the Were Garuruman, the Tai Kamiya, sorry, no, so the Tamer Tai, the Vidramon Zero, the Greymon, and the Agumon that we all know and love for Lightning Jump. And I believe this, right? Uh, no, I just did the promotion, didn't I? Oh, all that right. was you? Okay, then I'll, right. I'll, I'll just- This I'll one's just, you. Is it, was it me? <laughs> Was it 0.0? .0? You know what? Okay, no fine. Idea. Sean, you can handle the okay. box topper promotion. <laughs> I, I mean, I, the box toppers for 1.0 are broken. <laughs> let's just let's just say like the Agumon and the Greymon especially are broken because those are, at least in this format, necessary cards, right? If you think about Agumon, I don't know long-term, but plus 2K on anything with Greymon in the name, knowing that like Greymon is a common name in a lot of Digimon and Red is just really good. It's good. Like, what other rookie are you going to play? Unless there's, like, a very specific combo you're trying to pull off. If you're running Greymons, you're running that Agumon. The Greymon at the level 4 was not played for the majority of its time. Never, but now, never, never. Na yeah, but now Agumon, Lightning Joust. Okay, I'll take 3 security being 8k on a, on a level 4. This is great. I'll take that. So... Outside of that, though, like the the V Tamer tie stuff is if you're not playing all force, you're not playing it. Um, I, yeah, the other stuff is maybe not so broken. It's really just the red <laughs> that right. I guess matters. It's, it's interesting. I think we're in another situation just like 0, 0.0 where it feels like immediately when these came out, they were just nice. We're going to have Greymons. We're going to have Garurumons. And we know V Germans going to come out. So we should get these. But they didn't feel like needed cards. They didn't feel broken. They didn't feel like they could be abused well, today in set six. <laughs> so if you made the early like, hey, I like these cards. I'm just going to pick them up because they're cheap because they were for so These were actually abundant because of how many 1.0 boxes were opened. But now they're not. <laughs> so it's interesting to think about where there is value in this created because of scarcity or because of actual playability. I would say for the majority of these six cards, not so where, where would you say to put b this b tier? i would put it in b i think i put it in b because the, at least for the garurumon and the Greymon line it is good support for a common archetype you know and it doesn't limit itself to like garurumons with x or whatever it's just generic support so i put it in b because i think that at least four of the cards will have long-term viability in and out of play yeah, I just have to give a big shout out to the Wergarumon in that promo set. I absolutely love that card. Uh, Wergarumon is actually my favorite Digimon. And ever since it came out in 1.0, I've been using him in Blue Omni. And then uh, over time, he got better. He could restand if you have Garurumon. And then once we got ways to give him more DP, you know, you could swing at 7k. Feels pretty good. Good in Herald, Good name being a Garurumon. Uh, and then he got the Altar, which looks fantastic. So I'm just a huge fan of that card in general. It's one of my favorite cards in the entire game. So... Uh, just shout us to that card specifically, <laughs> but I agree with you guys. Okay, and now we have an example of all unique cards. Oh no, that's terrible, right? They're all unique. They're all hard to get. Well, Lewis, talk to us about Memorial Pack of one. Okay, or Memorial Pack is uh, easily the worst product we've ever had in the entirety of the Digimon franchise or TCG. Uh, it's just so they're all unique cards, yeah. but they're all awful. <laughs> There is one card that is remotely playable, which is the Agumon one, where you put an Agumon to the bottom to draw three. Like, I've seen people do that for fun. And you could, good. okay, you maybe make an argument, but it's not good. No, no, but every good. other okay. card is, like, super, and I mean super unplayable. They have no value as, like, I don't know, anything. I believe they're just, like, screenshots from the anime, so it's not even, like, they're cool art. They're not holo. They don't look nice. They're not good. It just feels like a waste. I think I have like two of these still sealed and like, I don't know, they're just useless. I, this is the worst thing we've ever gotten probably, so easy D tier. 1000%. Yeah, I, I'm D tier as well. I actually have like, I don't know, like 10, 12 of these packs. I've <laughs> never opened them because I'm just like, 
these will never be in a deck. Because, like you like you said, um, there's that one, the ties growing up, that says if you put an Agumon on the bottom, draw three. Hey, a zero cost draw three seems like, that seems like it'd be good. But, like, your deck is only 50 cards. Do you really want uh, to take up any of that space with a card that bottom decks a Digimon on the field? <laughs> no. One of yours? That, like, <laughs> right. Could attack? Yeah. Right. If it said if it said bottom deck A and an Agumon, and you could interpret that as your opponents, I'd be like, you know, <laughs> interesting. Or a card with Agumon in its name, and you activate the security effect, and you bottom deck a bond of bravery and draw three. That would be broken. <laughs> but that's not how it works. I think that for cards that they 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 must have known that these weren't good. I know that thematically, like you're tying them into like the different tamers, and it's cute. But like commission art for this card at least make it collectible so i have i have a theory that actually makes it like an s tier level set in terms of i honestly think because there's a lot of anime card games out there, card games that are based on animes and a lot of the time when it comes to making arts they'll just use screenshots from the actual anime <laughs> as the card arts and digimon does not do that however for this and I honestly could not tell you why, other than I think they're making a joke. I think they're like making fun of other <laughs> games that do this. They're like, hey, we know this sucks. We knew it was going to suck. It's called Memorial Pack. That sounds like meme, doesn't it? This is the meme <laughs> pack and we're making fun of people. So I truly think that this is like some kind of sick joke that they came up with and only they know about it and not us. I know it's like Illuminati type conspiracy theory, but it makes me like want to appreciate it some more. But you're right. It is dog doo doo. Don't put it anywhere higher than D doing ridiculous <laughs> but yeah that's my that's my conspiracy theory for the day let me know your thoughts down below in the comments i think it's actually pretty uh so we're going from oh look new cards aren't a problem they're all unique they're all who cares if you can get them or not ep1 tournament pack one uh if you guys don't know tournament pack one was actually thought up to be an easier way to get these cards than how you got them in Japan because they were originally magazine promos that you would get by having a subscription to a service. And that's how you got these cards. In here, we just have to do well at tournament. Hopefully put them in a one card pack. Well, it's harder than that when stores don't get them, when tell what cards are in them and then take them and give <laughs> you the one you actually wanted. And then of course, the actual second market for these cards are the ones that are good pretty outrageous so you know there's a lot going on here but the cards are cool by cards i mean card and by card i mean diaboramon who i like <laughs> and i was super happy to get four of these pretty immediately when local started didn't have to worry about it but people that did have to worry about it i feel bad for i love diaboramon i love recommending it to people in the deck but when i have to go you have to pay 70 bucks for two different cards so that's 150 bucks off the bat for a deck just two cards not the best thing to advertise so this is, I think, the epitome of the problem with unique, powerful cards in harder to get stuff, especially when there's problems with how that product is and how it's handled. So, in terms of the cards, I love the cards that are in here. Gave rise to a deck called Turbo Black Mill, but that's all it ever did. Um, and then, of course, we have the deal. So, I'm going to put it in D tier for that reason, because uh, of the community impact being not as great as it should be. Uh, however, it was the first official like tournament support for online locals, which I think made a boom for the scene. These cards were wanted, they were shot after, but it, it, it definitely has the worst memory for Yeah, I I mean if you also just look at the cards to your point, like Diaboramon is the set. Right? To be frank. Like there are Not some even on the, like, like the other one. Venom Myotis. <laughs> The yeah, guy. that's the other that's the other level six, which, which like look, some of the other cards you could play. I think there's a there's a Devimon card in there somewhere, like a Demi Devi that is maybe playable in Devi Dan Devi, but not necessary. There's a Kurosari that is playable in Diabora, but not necessary. Like all the cards in there are if you own them and you have a strategy that makes use of them, cool. So I think as a actually as like a set, we luckily it's D tier. Aside from Diavora, man, it's actually lucky that this is not ha, does not have more cards that are necessary. And I will say, anybody who's going to Digimon Card Fest, uh, Diaboramon is one of, I think, the participation, like a stamp Diaboramon, right? Yep, and, uh, uh, so, yeah, so there's like three sets of promos, a winner's one, and then two participation ones. He's 
I think one of the ones. Also, mm. I think I got like I, it says like finals on it, and then it's like winner on it. So like there's two. I don't remember. Yeah. There's a bunch. He's one of them. He'll probably be like there'll be droves. There'll be a bunch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so like you know, if they sell out, there'll be at least at least a couple thousand of those cards more on the market and that will be then the fancy version not the tournament pack version so it'll bring the price down a hair uh but yeah i think it's a d tier i think it's a d tier product overall just because yeah there's only one card yeah i think for sure it is d tier i think the idea behind it was that like uh you know black and purple didn't have that many cards because the game was you know kind of new and they were mostly red yellow blue or whatever uh but most of those cards are just like terrible and they're very hard to get. And then the ones that were good, you guys talked about the Abor, obviously. Uh, I like the, there's a rookie that gives you one KDP on your opponent's turn. Uh, and that card is like, okay, if you wanted to play like a Cranium on deck or something, but was still like 20, 30, maybe 40 bucks and you need four of it. Like, I'm not paying that much for that. So I'm just not <laughs> playing that deck, you know? And like, it was hard to get by. And most of the times when I did go to locals and I did get one of these packs, I would open it pull a 50 cent dollar card that nobody wanted like a Magnus Mon. And then it was just a bad experience. Like, yeah, if you got that worm, it was awesome. Otherwise the pack sucks. So I don't know, I'm not a fan uh, D tier for sure. Like it, it, simultaneously the most dramatic packs I've ever opened is only one card, but then it's also like the most disappointed I've ever been when I saw a card. Like, yep. ooh, I played in a tournament for three hours. To, uh, moving on though, to I think a better direction when it price support i'm gonna do both of these they're essentially the same theme and i'm only including one of each we have the tamer packs or sorry, the tamer party packs then we have turn pack two onward so what these are these are reprint packs that still only have one or two cards in the max but they're not cards they are all alternate art cards so like think of metal graymon the angela mon for the tamer party pack think of like monze mon or growl mon Siren Mon for the uh, tournament packs. The latest, I think, t uh, Tamers, original set one, yeah. got tournament pack three. I think we should rate all these the same because more or less, they're all the same. Tournament pricing. Sean, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I would give it overall maybe a B tier uh, because some of the art is nice, like Monze Mon. Is adorable. Like the, the the alternate Monze Mon is cute. If you're playing it in a deck, that's the one you want to play, in my opinion. Um, I think that some of the some of the original Tamer Battle packs um that had the foiling of the Wearguru Mon that has the sec plus one inheritable. I if like I think I have a play set of those almost. And so like, yeah, like if I'm running that card, I will run that version because it's shinier. That's right, cool. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if we're rating them all the same, I'll give them a B, but I will say. Some of the early ones where there was that foiling is actually nicer than the most recent one with like, which like, don't get me wrong, reprinting the tamers is I think useful, but there's no foiling. It's all just flat. Yeah. And so like you pull the tamer and like, I wish they would have foiled something in those packs because it just kind of feels like, like, I don't want to, I actually don't want to play the, the alternate art non-foil tamers because it just, it feels like, cheap cardboard i don't know why i don't know what it is about those but it just does not pop the same way so i i like those tamer packs oh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, yeah. especially because like now you get like four cars which is really nice and they kind of go together and there's some alters in there that are like pretty cool uh, pretty cool pretty cute and, like good cards like the salamon that on the mission yeah. recovers tentamon that on play you get to potentially draw one or the patamon which is tamers uh, there's a couple like really bad ones like i think the red one is like really booty uh but for the most part i think they're pretty good and i, I think this is a much better way to the tournament packs where you go to a tournament you get a nice prize you're not gonna pull a card that's worth a hundred dollars uh, but on average you get something that's like decent whether because you know it's cool art or a card you didn't have before or, you know, just like a nice reprint. So I think these are like much better way to handle the tournament packs. Yeah, uh, I would argue that the Tamer party packs are better than the tournament packs where it's like the Monze Mon or whatever. Um, so I think I think it's safe to say like Tamer uh, the Tamer party packs or whatever called should be B tier and then the regular new tournament packs with the booty Tamers. Just <laughs> like they're just reprints of cards that are actually pretty easy to get or in the Tamer's case, kind of hard to get. Like Lewis said, it makes going to tournaments feel like I'm actually using want for something that I have to get. Uh, so I think CT that stuff because like reprints to me aren't neat. 
And yeah. so I instant like devalue them in the sense, not, not in the sense of like reprints of like cards that aren't easy to get, but reprints of like yeah. Monzaemon. I'm just like, I don't <laughs> have, I have a billion Monzaemons. I'm good, you know? I will. So it's tough. I will say the one thing that's nice though, in terms of like, if you want to recognize a player that's been playing a long time, like sometimes you don't need the fanciest, like if a fancy version of a card doesn't exist, having the alternate art that you could only have gotten from a tournament pack two years ago, like you might be sitting at a table and be like, whoa, that's like, you know, the person across from you. So like, that's actually, that it's that does kind of feel cool when you like, if you've been playing a long time and you meet new people and they didn't know that those versions existed, like that's actually kind of interesting. So give it a little bit of credit for that. Yeah, yeah, that's aspect. why it's not like D2, you know, it's not like a useless yeah. product. It, it has yeah, value, exactly. but I just think the value isn't like, <laughs> game breaking like you're not going to play no. the game because of the reprints right or this <laughs> no. is not, th th these aren't going to help you play the game unless they're of cards that are hard to get which i think the tamer packs are a better example of yeah lewis dash pack one which is metal garuamon grand kuagamon and i believe black war Grand. go ahead Bob. uh doesn't that one also have the gabumon and the agumon no 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 that's set six dash pack you're thinking of that i'm i'm the great legend dash pack. Oh, okay, wait. Okay, great oh. Legend Dash Pack. Yeah, great. Because there was a yeah, Dash Pack there, there for 1.0. There was a 1.0 that you got the alternate packs. art. Okay, yeah, those are okay. all, only alternate let me, art. Yes. Let me preface this. All right, <laughs> that is it for the promotional packs. We're now moving on to the Dash Pack slash like the interesting or just unique packs that come out alongside sets that actually have cards. So the original Dash Packs were just alternate art reprints. Or, or alternate arts that originally came out in the Japanese sets that they couldn't fit into the main set, so they just made the dash packs instead. Uh, but the first dash pack that actually had unique cards was that four dash pack for Great Legend, and that's the one that Louis. Okay, that's the one with Black War Greymon, Metal Garumon, and Grand Greymon. Okay, that one was fantastic. Uh, I really like it. All three cards are, you know, good, playable, things that were hard to get, and they made it easier for us to get. Uh, so I think it's fantastic. Like the green one was like its own deck. Uh, I love the Black War Greymon. I know people sleep on it. He was okay then. He'll always be at least somewhat playable. He's a Greymon. There's good support there. And uh, the Metal Greymon also, you know, made its own deck at all. So I think uh, those were really good. The way they handled it was great where it's like you're already buying the product and it was just something you got on top of it. But it was a nice bonus because those were cards that you wanted and you needed. So it was good. I'd say probably A tier. I would definitely agree with you. Uh, the hype for the Metal Guru on was huge. Uh, that pretty much was the purple deck for the entirety of set four. Grand Kumagamon gave birth to Green K. That's just archetype. And that's two thirds of the set. Stellar, amazing. And value problem was there. You know, they are unique cards. They're hard to get, but there was a bunch of them. They were everywhere. So I don't think it was that. Yeah, I'm, I'm solid A tier as well. Um, I think all three cards have playability, some a little bit more than others, but like the fact that also you get two dash packs per box that you purchase hopefully. and there's only three cards in the set. Yeah, hopefully. If your store is doing it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's only three cards in the set, so it's actually a relatively small set too. So like if you were to buy, you know, like I, I buy six boxes, which is a lot, but like you can usually get a play set of everything and you could basically get a play set of all the dash pack cards too with that same amount so it's like it's not like i'm having to go out of my way to buy extras of some ancillary product um i just do my normal thing and i also get a play set of these other cool cards and i'm like yeah i'm down that's the perfect way to do that kind of thing yeah so i i think promo packs that are built on buying product versus going to events is different mm. like i can't go to texas to play in digifest i can't get those things i can box it had sent to me dash packs so out that way uh so i think like these are definitely judged differently in terms of these can have unique cards while the other one uh that being said though we're moving on to the power-up packs uh now these were originally created for the one year anniversary of the japanese game that was that came along with four however we just got them alongside set four and i think we had a couple of issues i can't remember like an entire country didn't get the entire month. That's like bad, right? Uh, so, you know, it's kind of the same thing of just like TP1 where it's like, oh no, it's even worse than TP1 actually because all these cards were crazy. Like you had the Agunimon, the Lobomon, the Palmon, which already were like, like needed for the archetypes they were played in. Uh, 
and had a bunch of initial hype for the future. You know, this power pack is what made Ancient Garon actually a card people wanted because uh, they flash into it. Obviously, we had the hindsight of what six was like, so that made it even worse for us English players. But if I'm honest with you, I actually don't think this pack had the most impactful of cards, except for okay, because didn't actually need any of the cards, but because they were hard to get and people thought you needed them, it just made it absurdly expensive to either get the packs or the cards. I mean, the common version of Palmon that came in this pack was $5. And I'm like, bro, you don't even need that card to play Green OTK. Who cares if you have jamming? You're 13,000 DP. You're going to be fine. Like, chill. It was just a thing you got to be safe. It wasn't a thing you needed. I thought it was. So I think how this set was distributed wasn't the best i think how this set was looked at by the community was incorrect and i think how it was handled in the secondary market was one of the worst of all the products here and I, i'm putting in a d tier for that reason the cards are fine like 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 the hybrid stuff actually made hybrids playable and but i, I i'll just play freaking war graymon and not care about any of it at all who cares i i will this is a disagreement i actually put this in a tier from the perspective of what do these cards from a design card design perspective what do these cards have an impact on i agree with you that the palmon especially once bt like what six came out and you got plus 2k on digiburst like the palmon weirdly is the least impactful long term because like ah, if you're 13k you don't like if you hit something in there and with and you needed the jamming rip but otherwise just go for it but the Lobomon and the Agunimon, like, they are, actu I think, actually necessary for those archetypes. Because, like, you, what are you going to do? Climb up all the way into that mm -hmm. stack? That's not the point of that deck, right? right. You need to got to go fast, right? Um, Demi Devimon, Dan Devi is not a deck without that card. Just straight yes. up. Yes. Like, that card is required. Um, the Gatomon is also, I think, in the camp of Palmon, which is, like, I like the card with Mastymon. It's nasty because it's a recover one blocker. So it's like stupid. Um, and then the last one is the Sunarizamon. Sunarizamon, I think of all the cards, is probably the one that might have the most value long term because just giving a Black Digimon piercing if it's 13K or more, like there will be more Black Digimon and it does not specify anything. Um, so uh, overall, though, I think that most of the cards in here are actually pretty impactful for the decks that they are designed for. I would agree with you that the distribution <laughs> was a massive problem. So I would uh, put it, I, I would like to say A tier. I, I would go down to B or C just based on the distribution, though. That's that's my two cents. I want to bring up Sean on this oh, one. Sorry, go ahead, Lewis. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm with Sean on this one. I would put it on A tier uh, because... The cards were good, and to me, the biggest thing about them was, like you were saying, Steven, early on, it's that Bandai realized that our meta does not have to match what Japanese players played with, and those were cards that completely changed what BT4 could have been. Sure, we still had Yellow War Grammar dominating, but it let me, you know, play my Ancient Garurumon and, like, do well at a regional with it. It let me play Mastodon with the Gatomon, and if you want to play Ancient Greymon, you could do that. Dan Devi, like Sean was saying, was just unplayable without it and a playable deck with it so just because one of those products that could change what the format is i think that's really important and impactful and for that i like it a lot maybe i'm just like hung up like i agree with you guys and what you're saying about what these cards did like in right for those archetypes but i personally wasn't a fan of those archetypes during this format myself and to look at people who wanted to play these archetypes but had to spend this much money to play them and they definitely did not have to, given how actually meta relevant they were. It made me feel bad for them. And I don't like when people buy products and I'm like, oh, I can't be having fun with that right now. I feel bad for you. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. Because like now I don't think these cards are hard to get at all. And they're nice and they're fun. And they're going to probably yeah. do something, if anything. Uh, and Dan Devimon does need uh, Demi Debbie. And that's so I think I'll agree with you guys and just put you're, you're right. Like if you care about this product, it matters that much to you. And thus, you'll pay the money for it. But I don't care about this product, so why would I ever pay that money? <laughs> I well, was, was my I, problem. I feel you on, like, the cards itself were very expensive. But again, if you got them as intended, it's like you're buying the yes. product and then yes. you're getting them for free, I, which yeah, was, for like, sure. a huge yeah, yeah, bonus. Yeah. Like, the design, the idea of this product is beautiful 
beautiful. I would actually went yeah. off, just left a bad taste. Yeah. Uh, but so, and but you're right. Let let's think of this how it was intended and not how we actually got it because, you no, know, that's a fair thing. <laughs> now the next one. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, dash pack for set six, most recent one. Oh, no. Over. oh my gosh. So wait, what, there's the Gabumon, the Agumon. What are the other? No, no, there's no. Are... Is there an Agumon? In... No, it's Gabumon, oh, no. Kurosarimon, it's the, it's the, um, Kudamon, uh, Kurosar. I said the Kurosar. It's yellow one the oh. guillemon and then the guillemon yeah yeah the attacker yeah. Guillemon that draws a card yeah and then it's black one oh chris sorry what's the the green uh the green one is I mean... oh hercules come yes, oh right other, yeah, 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 right yeah, 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 the other one the other one yeah yeah <clears throat> i mean that should tell you one. all you need to know i'm gonna put that at c <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i'll put that one at c tier because to be honest like there's one card that everybody wants and it's gabumon and i think this is an example of them they did a great thing with the with the great legend dash pack which is there's only three of them you get two packs per box cool beans uh and this set there was i think six cards and you still get the same number of i think packs per box like dash packs but like there's twice as many cards in the set so to actually pull a play set which these cards other than like a cup, maybe the Giumon, like these cards all kind of feel like you might want a play set of them, right? Like the Gabumon, the Kurosari, if you're playing um, Diabora and you want Decoy, I think that's the one it is. So pulling all of the ones that you might, of the one that you want, I think was really hard because it was too many cards for the way it was distributed. So I would put this one at C tier because really there's, there's one card that you really want. And then if you're specifically looking for a, deck to build like maybe you want the others like playing diabora maybe you want kurosarimon eh, up in the air but c tier product for me how about you lewis uh yeah i think i'm with sean on that it's one of those things where like the idea is good again we're getting cards that can enable new things do some cool things like maybe the hercules would have enabled a new green deck except it wasn't that good or maybe the kudamon would have made kantarismon a deck but it kind of didn't so like like the attempt is there but it just didn't really play out that way so not that exciting and then i do agree six is a bit too many so it makes it hard to get the gabumon so uh, c seems fine it's kind of like a whatever <laughs> so i agree with you guys it probably belongs in c however for a completely i actually think all the cards in this aren't uh, even the gabumon like when it was out it's fine but now that we have the ex1 gabumon like, yeah. I don't even think it's needed at all anymore. Like you probably shouldn't be playing it. Instead, just playing the Drabumon so you can dig for everything in your deck, not just the Tamer card. Uh, however, I do love the intention behind this dash pack. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm bringing in my boomer once again. Of like back in my day, they did not do this, but this is a unique English-only product, only in English, mm -hmm. as far as I know. I don't think it's possible to get these cards in the Japanese form of the game. And so once again, Bandai is just saying, hey, we want you guys to play a different game than JP is because we want you to have a different experience that we have you. And this feels like a piece of legacy support for a lot of archetypes that people love. Also, it's a bit of fairness because now we have a Gabumon and an Agumon that do the exact same thing, which just makes sense given everything we had for set five. So I love the intent and the meaning behind this, and I'm excited to see if they do it again for set seven, because that will probably be a big deal. And the cards are cute. I actually think the Kudamon's better than people think it is, but you know, no one's gonna force mine anymore unless their name is me. So I don't <laughs> think it's gonna happen anytime soon. So that's why I'm putting it in seat here, but I do love the intent behind it, and I can't wait to see what else they do like this in the future. Um, I believe these cards are possible to get now in Japan, but they were not when they as i know interesting and have one product to go last one the gift box or <laughs> i guess ex1 lewis feel free to talk about this if you can <laughs> okay so if the regular ex collection was a d tier the worst booster set we got then the gift box was like the worst part of that uh, I do want to say that uh, there was one person that gifted me the gift box. Uh, Sebastian, thank you. I appreciate it. It was a fantastic gift to receive as like a fan of the game. Like, great gift. But the product itself was terrible. You got like four packs with a promo that wasn't even unique to it because they just put it in the actual set. 
So there was like no reason to get it. They could have picked anything else. And it was like really expensive. It was hard to get. And if you got the cards early with the gifts box, you couldn't even use them because it's not legally out in tournament. So it's like, cool, I have the cards, but I can't use them. And the set isn't that good and it's expensive. So uh, the gift box is easily like, the worst product they could have made for like I think like the TCG players maybe it was good in like the casual standpoint where like if you need a Christmas gift and you know somebody that plays the game but you're like super casual or I don't know maybe it was good in that regard but for us no it was awful like I'm a big fan of promotional things like this a gift box a reprint box of like Tapu Lele for Pokemon you know like, like that's fun that's cool makes the game more accessible makes the game fun but like, but like, I'm a fan of the War Greymon that is black. It's awesome. But like, you know, I think 90% of the people aren't. So I feel like this is a product that was designed with intention to be cool, but execution of it was just questionable. It left a lot of weird feelings that actually got them. Also, again, design issues. I'm pretty sure this was supposed to go on sale in December, but most people didn't get it until January. Uh, so you know that's not a that's not the, that, that's not a good gift anymore. Uh, but again, most of that stuff's out of Bandai's control. So I'm not gonna halt them on that or the design of the product. But it is a fact, and it affect the history of the product in our minds. And I, I agree. E tier. I mean the EX one packs. If it was like a collection of like here's a 1.5 pack, here's set five packs, here's a set four pack, I would have been like, oh that's sick, cool. Like that maybe would have been better, but it would have been like. Me. I think. For me, given the like production issues and delays, shipping delays, all that stuff, like it's actually I'm glad that it's not a great product because if it had been a great product, it would have felt so bad. You would have been like, I cannot like because already you couldn't find them. Like people would find them, buy them, resell them. They were selling on like TCG Player and eBay for like what forty bucks, fifty bucks That's a pop crazy. or more. It's I, stupid. Bad people I, bought those because you know. People I mean. <laughs> Honestly, this this product feels like it was a brainchild of the sales division at Bandai International. Do you know what I mean? Like, like they wanted a product to take up shelf space at key retailers so that people would see Digimon Card Game. That's why this was designed. Because, like, honestly, it just does not really appeal to, like, a player base. It doesn't get new players, I think, really into the game. That's what Starter Decks are for, right? So it was just kind of like, eh. Cool, you get some shelf space with a product that's mostly irrelevant which like i guess i'm glad it was relevant because that would have sucked if it wasn't right hopefully the next time they do this they'll not only make it relevant but it'll be like actually accessible to like yeah. a mass of players and hopefully it'll attract new players i think is hopefully a goal for things that are generic like really like a new thing like this is a reprint that essentially or I guess like it was our first introduction to EX one, but that not it wasn't intended to be that. So yeah, it's a it's a deep question. And there we go. We have the completed tier list for every product or less released in the Digimon TCG English version of the game and a couple release JP just to get those boom guided in the comments. Here it is. Uh it's pretty balanced. Uh I do think there's um maybe a bit too many here but i think that's like speaks to what's like really cool about digimon is even things that aren't super impactful immediately can grow and become better and it's clear and so that leaves a lot of averaging opinions in our minds it's like it's great now wasn't great back then it was great then wasn't so great now so we need to like find the best way to kind of fairly judge that things that i think are groundbreaking and foundational for what makes this game amazing are ranked at s no question fast ones that are just adding a lot to it is happy or ranked at a and then c and d are just like we can do better or these are just our selfish picks like i know it sucks but i love it so we're gonna leave it there <laughs> if you guys want to try your own uh tier list i'll leave a link down below to the template you can make it yourself uh share us thoughts on twitter i'll leave links to all of our twitters down below if you guys jam us with better opinions that you have that are far superior to ours uh i want to do one quick thank you to sean and louis joining me for digimon the tier list movie a lot of fun uh sean and lewis feel free to say your goodbye uh yeah thank you for having me on steven uh that that's it thank you <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate you yeah, thanks uh thanks for having me it was a lot of fun i hope we can uh, you know do more stuff in the future i just want to say i love the digimon card game 
And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what it has uh, in store for us in the future. And boom, there you guys go. That wraps up Digimon Tier List the movie. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to let me know by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, and uh, clicking that bell for notifications so you know when my videos go live for you. Also, if you did make it this far, let me know down below by commenting the time code that you're reading this at. It's probably like an hour and 28 minutes or whatever. If you made it that far, put that down there, and I'll know that you're super awesome. One last shout out to Gyroshan and Luis for joining me today. It was an absolute pleasure having them on the channel once again. Hopefully, we can do more with them in the future. With all that said, I have been your true champion, Steven. Please be sure to work hard, rest easy, and live well. And I will see you all next time. Peace.